Hey, Stroke Lines. In, a, in this video on Auto Hockey Studio, I wanted to um, talk to how I use this, this output window um, and the, some of the cool features uh, Maestro has built into it. And um, to first off, so let me make sure my script is running. And I'm going to hit the hotkey to launch this. And it's going to dump Hello World into the output. Right? So, um, hey, no biggie. Um, it's very convenient instead of having a message box or, but, but I really use it for when there's a lot of text. So, um, that's what I want to demonstrate here was this one. I'm going to read in this big file and you can see how I'm going to read in the file and dump the whole file there. So it's 214 lines and it just dumps it right to it real quickly. Right? Um, so while I have this up, let me, let me demonstrate some other, the, the cool parameters. So, you know what, first let's go back to hello world for a couple of these. Cause it's easier to, um, to demonstrate. So, there's the hello world, right? As I, as I mentioned, um, the clear, if I set that to a zero, now when I rerun this, watch what it does. It doesn't delete what was there before, right? So this clear means, do you want to get rid of what's already in the window or just leave it? And so it's, it's nice to have that ability, right? Normally I want to clear it out because I want to know what I'm doing. This is the output, but hey, every once in a while, you'd like to see them, you know, right next to each other. And, and it's just, it's really cool. Um, <clears throat> the line break, I gotta actually for that one. I gotta get set this to zero, because the line break right now it um it automatically um you wouldn't notice anything if it was clearing everything. But what the line break does is if I set this to zero and rerun it, watch where hello world this hello world appears. So I didn't clear it, and this time hello world ended up in the same line. So you have that option as well. Again, I don't really change this that often, but it's it's good to know it's there. Um, set it back to one. Now this sleep, it allows it to, um, how long you want it to kind of, well, we got to have the clear for that, right? So, so if I set this to zero, watch what happened. Like it, it just is instantly there, right? But if like, if I run it again and I run it again, like I'm hitting it, how do I know that when I'm troubleshooting that that's new output? And so this sleep, if I set it at, at 2,500, Oops, that's way too high. So when I run it, watch it clears it, and then it's going to wait two and a half seconds until the output gets put in there. And so I leave this usually at 500, so I can I can watch it blink, and I know that's new output because I can see it disappear and then come back. But it's a super handy way to be able to do that. Um, but that's basically uh, oh, uh, so that's that's the first part just dealing with text. Now let's comment both of these out, and we're going to jump into using objects now. In here, I'm I'm taking the object or string, which I'll put a link into the comments for this. But um, Maestri has his object or string function, um, and let me first show what is in object obj one. And actually, that should be lower. Um, there we go. So if I run it now, what's cool about that object or string is. It, um, and of course this works in a message box as well, but I like having it in this output when you have a big object, it's really nice having this output window because so, you can see everything at once. Um, and at first it takes a little getting used to, but, um, cause you see, it just says dot O N E equals one and dot O sorry, dot T W O equals two. Well, imagine if you wanted to access that, um, you would say like message box percent. And now you put back in the name of the object OBJ one. And then dot one, right? And that's, so that is how, when I do this, the number one comes up, right? So anyway, that's how you can iterate, um, look at it. And let's say if we were at what's cool with this, the object string function, let's say I put in three, which happens to be, um, so two is, um, two, I did in Spanish, um, dos and trace, and then three is multi-level. And this is where, again, it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily expressing all the advantages of this output window, but when you have a really big object, message boxes often look really, really hard to follow. The other great thing is you can come in here and copy it and paste it. Um, the only thing you can't do in here that I remember is you can't search. Um, and the other thing, if I remember correctly, no, um, I was going to say something to do with the UTF-8, but I think that's just the find replace has that in here. You can still put the UTF-8 stuff and probably copy and paste it fine. I think he actually fixed that. That was when I noticed and I think he fixed it. But um, 
Anyway, that's a super quick outlook on the, uh, it's called the debug window and it's actually used for debugging, but I use it instead of having a bunch of ugly message boxes that break lines, different spaces. It's really hard to see. I like having it available, um, and just have it to be able to jump to it. Thanks.